And here is what a BLAST results page looks like. So first, at the top, we've got a drop-down menu where we can look at the results for each of our query sequences, that is, each of the FASTA sequences that we entered. So if I click on that, we'll see that we have our two query sequences. Name of sequence, which was 29 base pairs long, and then there was the second sequence I made up, name of second seek, which is 28 base pairs long. So right now we're looking at the results for the first DNA sequence, 29 base pairs. And here we see some important results. There are 114 matches of the sequence that I randomly generated and entered that I called name of sequence. And these colored lines down here represent a graphical representation of for these 29 nucleotides that make up our query sequence, which part of those 29 nucleotides with the key shown here, which part of those 29 nucleotides matched each one of these horizontal lines represents a sequence that's in the database that matches, so for example, this black line matches probably from about nucleotide 2 to about nucleotide 20 of our query sequence. And the colors of the lines represent the score or how well our query sequence matched a subject sequence, that is a sequence that's in the database. So usually you want to look for scores that are greater than 200, that means really, really high quality or good matches. Because we're using such a short search sequence, none of the scores are going to be very large. And if we scroll down a little bit farther, we have a table view of the same information, essentially, telling us, for example, the name of a species, Clupea herangus. This is genomic scaffold or genome sequence. It gives us the score, the query cover, that is, what percent of our query sequence matches. So 68% of our nucleotides that we randomly entered match the Clupea herangus genome. 100% identity, and if we scroll down even farther, we will see sequence alignments. That is, this is the main most useful view for BLAST results. So each of these sections of the alignments view represents one of those results. Here's our query sequence from nucleotide 4. So we start, it starts at nucleotide 1. But our match starts at the fourth nucleotide that I typed and goes until the 23rd. And so we have query sequence matching from position 4 to position 23, or nucleotide 4 to 23, matches the subject sequence, which is again the Clupia harangus genome sequence. From position 25,704, that's the position of that first G, to position 2,500. 25,723, sorry, which is the position in the genome sequence of that last T. And we can see that there's a 100% identity, that is, every nucleotide in our sequence matches exactly nucleotides in the Clupia herangus genome. However, note that this match doesn't start at query nucleotide 1. So we're missing nucleotides 1, 2, and 3. The first three nucleotides that I typed in aren't matching whatever the first three nucleotides here in the Clupia herangus genome would be. To take one more look, let's look at the Pongo abellii genome. Pongo is orangutans, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it chimpanzee? Uh-oh, I better go look it up. Here we see a similar result. From our sixth nucleotide through the 24th, there's a perfect match to a region of the Pongo abellii chromosome 5 sequence. Now all of this is important because in an upcoming Google exercise assignment, I'm going to ask you to blast a nucleotide sequence, and I want you to take 
a screenshot of this view of the blast results screen. And that is a screenshot that you'll be pasting or attaching to the Google assignment to turn it in. But this is the view I'd like you to be looking at when you take that screenshot is the top scoring alignments is the best alignments between your query sequence, the nucleotide sequence that you paste into BLAST, and what are the top scoring subjects or database entries that match your query sequence.